Welcome back to the channel. In today's video we will be going to create a classic game of Tetris using the Godot engine. Whether you're new to game development or you are a seasoned professional, this tutorial will guide you through the basics of setting up a Tetris game in Godot. Now Godot is a free and open source game engine that's known for its user-friendly design and powerful features. So that's why it's a fantastic choice for beginners and experienced developers. All right, so the first thing we want to do is create our Godot project. You click on new and then you just choose a project path and the name of the project. In my case, I'll just name it Tetris clone. Then once you are in here, we can go ahead and set up the file system here. We can get rid of the basic icon and we just want to create a couple of folders. The first one will be scripts. Then we want a folder for scenes and we will add one for assets if we will use those. All right, great. So we've got our basic setup. Now let's discuss the grid system, which is central to Tetris. Now Tetris uses a grid where each piece or tetromino fits within the grid cells. Our grid will be 10 columns wide and 20 rows tall. This grid system is crucial for the tetrominoes to align properly and fall correctly. We will implement this grid system in code in future steps, but keep the structure in mind as we proceed with the uh, tutorial. So what we will do is we will start with a control node and let's rename this to main. And in here we want to add a color rect. So you can hit Ctrl and A to add a new control node or a, another node. Or you can click on this plus icon here. So we add a color rect for the background of our playable area. And in the color rect we want to add a node 2D, which will be our grid lines, which we will show in just a moment. And we will just rename this to game area. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and uh, set the layout of the control to a full rect so it expands across the entire screen so we can come here click on this one here full rect and you'll see it will take up the whole screen now for the game area we want to set a custom size in this case we will use 300 by 600 and what we also want to do is uh, set the mouse filter to ignore on the control because we won't be using our mouse and then for the game area, we just create a darker color as the background. And then we also want to make sure that the layout is set to bottom center. So we click that. And then we save this file in our scenes folder as the main scene. And we want to set the main scene as the main scene. So you right click the scene click on set as main scene and then you uh, can start it up and you'll see that it will use the main scene as our um, first scene that we see here. So now that we have done that, we can go ahead and get into the scripting part. So we want to click our main control node here. We want to click this little icon here that will allow us to make a new script. We want to place it in the scripts folder and we will just call it main.gd. Now in here, we want to delete what's here. We could have actually kept the first line here. Then we want to set up some consts. So we want the grid width, the height and the block size. So let's do that. All right, there we go. We set up our consts. Now we just want to set up our grid, which will basically be an array. So we want to go ahead and type that out here. We just started out with an empty array and then we can get started with importing our game area and grid lines. Now, one way you can do this is just typing out the entire variable here. So like this. Or what you can do is you can click this and drag it in here and hold control while you release the mouse button. And then you can see it also does this for us. 
Then we want to make our ready function, which will be called every time we start our game. So we want to talk to a couple of functions in here, which we will create. The first one is initialize grid, which will obviously initialize the grid. And then we want one function to draw the grid lines in that grid. So let's start by making those functions. First, we will start by making the initialize grid function. In here, what we want to do is simply add some columns and make sure they are added to the grid. So what we can do is for X in range of the width, we create a new column and then for a Y in range of the height, we also make a new uh, column here and we append it. So basically add it to the column here. And then at the end, outside the first for loop, we add the column to the grid. So what this will do is it will draw our grid here. So the 10 wide and then the 30 high. The next one is drawing the grid lines. So this is pretty much the same. We want to have one for the grid width. Plus one because of the array. And then we just simply make a line here. So a new line 2D. And we want to add a point to this. Let's see here. So this will obviously make a line going from the left to right and then another one which will be for top to bottom. Like so. And we want to set the width of the line which we will keep to one here. And we want to set a color, which we will make white for now. We can obviously change this to our own colors if we want. But for this tutorial, we'll just use some basic variables and uh, basic colors here. And then we want to make sure we add the line to the uh, grid lines here. Oh. There we go. And we want to do the same for the Y. So we can copy that for loop and we just want to change a couple of things here so instead of the width we want to use the height and we also want to make sure that we change this one here so this is the grid width times the block size and then the y times the block size there we go and we actually need to rename this to Y here. All right. And there we are. We actually want to do this. Like so. All right, that should fix it. Okay. So what we can then do is we can actually start running our project. And as we can see, we have made the grid here with the lines going across and up and down. So this was pretty much it for the first um, part of the series. I'm planning on making this into an eight part series where we just simply go over some things and we uh, increment the difficulty video by video. So this was the first iteration where we just set up our project, we set up the grid, and then in future episodes, we will actually add the functionality of placing the blocks, adding some UI and polishing the game and even more stuff. But that's something you'll have to find out uh, later on. So if you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on the next part. Feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.